Hey guys, LD here. Welcome to the Beyond the Summit house. It's been a long journey since we last had our full-time studio online at our previous location. It's taken us almost five months, but we're finally ready after a long break to unveil the new main studio here today. Uh, as a part of that unveiling process, we're also releasing a new show known as In the Studio. Zayori here is going to be our main host and walk you through the show, but uh, it's got, we've got a lot of awesome stuff planned for you guys this year. I know it's been a long break, but I think it's going to be well worth the wait. So In the Studio is our new weekly show that focuses on hot topics in Dota 2. We're going to do some news coverage, and every week we're going to mix in some interesting segments, humor and serious analytics alike, and we're also going to bring in some very interesting guests. For our first episode today, we've got a great show lined up. Cinderin, Fear, and Demon will all be on the show. Demon will actually be here in the studio as well, and we've got some fun stuff planned. I, I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Before we get into the show, we've got something that y'all have been asking for quite a bit, and that is a tour of our house. And make sure you stick around today uh, after the guests are gone, because the final segment of the show will be a big announcement that, um, well, I won't spoil here, but I know you'll all be looking forward to it. Yeah, and one more thing, uh, myself, as well as a certain other David, who also owes you guys uh, a certain Enchantress cosplay, we're overdue to sing you some songs, and we're going to start that today, so stick around, because it will be extremely humiliating. Hey guys, welcome to the Beyond the Summit house tour. I'm Zayori, your tour guide for now. And let's take a look outside first. We're going to start by looking at some cars and we're going to head inside and look at what the rest of the house has to offer. So we've got four rides here at the Beyond the Summit house and uh, it's always a little bit cozy here in the driveway. First up, we've got uh, the Merlini Mobile. It is a Toyota 4Runner, one of the bigger rides we have at the house. Merlini is... Uh, well, he, he likes to be high up when he drives, you know, Merlini, Merlini likes to ride high a little bit. Over here, we've got uh, the LD van. Uh, it's been sort of known across the community as the Rape van. Not a name I'm particularly fond of. I like to just think of it as the Shaggin' Wagon, uh, where LD, I, I don't know what he does in this thing, but, uh, well, she's been ridden hard and put away wet, as they like to say. Uh, it is a 2000 Toyota van, I believe. We've got some... Uh, some, f some dents here down in the bumper on, on both sides, actually. You've got to be symmetrical when you're talking about the early 2000s. Uh, a good 14 years old. But as she gets around, I got to drive it the other day. It has a surprisingly mo smooth ride. So, uh, well, it's not too bad. Over here, we've got the two best cars in the house. Uh, we've got the Prius from none other than K-Pop Tosis. It's pretty nice. Sweet home Alabama plates still on this bad daddy. But... Um, yeah, it's a pretty nice hybrid. One of the nice things about California, you don't have to get those emission checks. Small anecdote, though. Poor Brian. He just bought this bad daddy less than six months ago, and uh, he paid the Alabama taxes. Apparently, Cal uh, California has a law that you have to pay the difference in taxes uh, if you buy a new car. So, uh, yeah, obviously, the uh, taxes here are a little bit more. So, very unfortunate for Brian. Trying to be a good guy and register that car, and uh, that's what happens. Over here, we've got the best ride in the house, none other than the Garden State. This is the Zayori Mobile, the old 2001 Honda Accord. She's uh, fit as a fiddle. Looking good, still rocking uh, the college stickers here. Uh, not too bad. She doesn't leave the old lot very often. We tend to stay inside a lot here at the BTS house. Up here, uh, this is actually our fifth parking spot, which sometimes come in, uh, comes in handy as we have guests here, but it's pretty much just become the storage spot for what I like to call the cardboard graveyard. Uh, obviously, we order a lot of stuff. We just got a whole bunch of monitors in for the downstairs studio. I think we got about 10, 15, something like that. Uh, a lot of screens, so there's, it's, it's a slow process. We have to slowly put it out in the recycling because we only have one recycling can. So um, that's how our garage space is being used. We can take a peek inside here, come through the back door before we go around the front. There's not too much to show off other than uh, the, uh, the shoe rack here. We try and be strict about taking shoes off before we enter the house, but Eh, we're not so good at following rules around here. Do you want to show off this bathroom, though? This is our uh, downstairs bathroom, uh, a.k.a. known as the uh, cat shit bathroom. As we can see, the litter is here. And uh, some days it's clean, other days it's not. We pretty much avoid this bathroom at all costs because it smells like cat shit. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan, not a fan. So, all right, let's go back out and uh, take a look here around the front of the house.
And we've got the front of the house here, the uh, opening area where the mail and packages like to lie. A nice sitting room, and here we've got our nice sitting area. Nice sectional couch here around the corner, and a nice chair as well. This is where most of the socializing happens in the house, when we're all not uh, hiding in our rooms. We've got Merlini's TV, as you can see, Star Ladder Live for us here, and um, well, Merlini's Reject Computer as well. Our intern Roland just picked up a PS4. It has proved is a pretty effective time waster. We've got FIFA, NBA, and a little bit of Rayman, Rayman Legends. What's the new one? I can't even remember, but um, not too bad, not too bad at all. This is the popular part of the house and then over here we've got another sitting area not so popular uh, these couches came with the house I believe I think we used this place once so when Charlie was here we played Yahtzee and that's the only time this this little room got some love other than that it's pretty much just here and ends up being a, an extra place to put some shit so uh, with that said let's go up to the second floor and take a look at some bedrooms All right, and here we have the bedroom of K-Poptosis, the first of the bedrooms. And uh, let's see if anybody's home. Brian? Oh, hey there. So this is, uh, this is Brian's room. It's rather quaint. Yeah, quaint would be a good way to describe it. Um, I'd call it small. Yeah, um, that's a good word also. I was expecting something a little nicer, honestly, when I moved here. Um, David told, told me it was a six-bedroom house. I didn't realize that this was going to be considered a bedroom, um, but... I think they were taking Harry Potter a little too literally. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, you know, everyone says that, you know, even when you struggle through something and you persevere, you True. really appreciate it in the end. True. So I guess, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm paying my dues, I guess. Um, yeah. Just hoping one day, you know, that Al from Hogwarts will be coming to... Oh well, that'll be that'll be a big day for all of us. Yeah. Escort you to platform nine and three quarters. Yeah, but uh, we got your your helper here, the mastermind behind uh, most of the statistics at Beyond the Summit. Actually, little Sophie there. But uh, on a more serious note, we do have the real bedroom of K pop Tosis here. Yeah, you got your triple monitors, your giant TV, PS3 to go with our new PS4. And a uh, very, very nice little room. He uh, assembled it all on a very shoestring budget. Very yeah. impressive, my friend. But I get a goodwill chair. That chair actually usually stays in that Harry Potter room. Is more yeah, like the, the, the sitting room, the, yeah. sitting the, the room. quiet reflection. I need to get away from the world. Yeah, it's good for that. Yeah. Um, this desk super cheap, too. Like a couple of, uh, this thrift store in town for like 20 bucks. Very nice. This setup costs more, but. Yeah thrifting so uh, we've also got the k-pop closet here and eh, not too much to note he's got some some converse some shirts and well, everything you'd look for in a closet over here we do have the Zyori k-pop tosis bathroom and uh, it's a pretty straightforward little bathroom toilet shower two sinks toothbrushes Listerine all the all the things you'd look for in a bathroom here we do have uh, what I like to think of as the best room in the house. We've got the Zayori bedroom uh, in true Dota decor. You'll recognize some of the little panels uh, from the Dota radio studio we had set up at my last location. Nice little bedspread. I've been streaming from this this little bedroom, so you guys should be be pretty uh, pretty comfortable with what's going on over here. Double monitors, some nice monitor stands, nice chairs as well. Bought that one off LD. Nice uh, three hundred dollars for that uh, ergonomic bad daddy. But uh, let's head forward to the master bedroom. And we've got the Merlini room, the uh, master suite. Hi, Ben. Good, good. Nice room. This is, uh, I'm sure you'll recognize from twitch.tv slash Merlini Dota. Or is it just Merlini? Is it just Merlini? It's Merlini Dota. I had it right the first time. Nice Yeti mic and uh, some big monitors, nice big bed. It's actually the least furnished of the rooms. You've got the most space and the least furniture, man. I'm still deciding on what I want to put in. Yeah, still. How long have you been here now? Three months. Still deciding, huh? Yeah, I know. It's, it's, a, it's a hard All life. All I need is a computer. That's the spirit, Merlini. And a bed. And a bed. Well, apparently you also need a giant bathroom and not one, but two closets. As you can see, shirts coordinated by color, shoes organized very, very orderly, and... Um, I don't even know what you do in here, man. You've got the you've got the tub, the standing shower, 
the toilet with its own door, and then two sinks for one person. Although Merlini is the only one in the house that has a girlfriend, so I guess two sinks are appropriate. Brian has a girlfriend. Brian has a girlfriend, but she doesn't live around here, so mm -hmm. most of us have never seen her. But nice room, man. Very, very beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, all right. So we're going? Oh, it's going great. Thank you. Do you want to take over? You want to you interview me? No. Now? There's a kitty condo. No? Kitty? Oh, yeah, the kitty condo. Yeah, you're right. Don't forget about that. <laughs> oh, we won't. So uh, this is just laundry, nothing too special. Doing some laundry, nothing, nothing too crazy about the laundry room, to be frank. So uh, last up in bedrooms, we've got David and David. David number one here. We've got David Paca, and he is not in here, but uh, I'm sure you knew whose room it was anyhow. Some Australian pride up on the wall, and uh, a little teaser. Got the Enchantress wig over here. Uh, we had a guest in the house the other day who was a little bit confused and perturbed at the thought of God's cross-dressing, and uh, we assured them that it was for a cosplay. It's all in good order. Very, uh, very, very classy, true God style. He just got here not so long ago, so as you can see, still getting unpacked, clothes, clothes running amok. Uh, him and LD have these cute little vanities here. You got your own little mirror, and then there's a shared toilet. I'm not going to open that just in case LD's taking a shit. Nobody wants to see that. So we're going to press forward here, and this is the old uh, LD room. Do 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 do. do. And is it uh, empty? Oh, it looks like it. We got the place to ourselves here. So this is LD's bedroom, very classy as well. Uh, nice big bed, he got his TV set up, and this giant desk, this thing was a bitch to get up the stairs. It is huge, he bought the biggest desk he could find, and um, yeah, his rooms come together pretty well. This is where the cats used to hang out, and now, um, well, they've kind of taken, taken up new home in, in my room as well as Brian's. So, yeah, pretty standard. Everybody's bedrooms are relatively similar. LD with the nice view of the mountains. Beyond the summit, he can wake up every day and dream of all of the things we'll do beyond the summit. What a view. What a view. So last up, let's take a look at the upstairs. All right, and here we've got the third floor, our secondary studio where most of the star ladder action happens. You'll recognize that pretty face over there, none other than David Parker himself. Running the stream, man in the helm. Gods, what's up, man? How you feeling? I'm good. We had, just had Navi versus Alliance as well as Cloud9 versus Empire. And I don't know. Yeah? Enjoying myself. Awesome. Good day of casting. Yeah. How's the sleep schedule? I don't know if there is a sleep schedule. It's just <laughs> be awake when we've go to the cast. But yeah. How are you enjoying being back in LA? You've only been here for what, a week? Yeah, I, I've been back a week, but we've got so much done, it feels like it's been a month. So. Yeah, time's just flying by, or maybe the other way around. So this is our secondary studio. This is also uh, Roland's bedroom when we're not casting, which is not very often. So Roland's been sort of the nomad in the house. People have been asking if we've been hazing our intern, and I've been first to say no, but based on Roland's sleep schedule, I think you could probably consider that hazing. Uh, he's got his studio set up over here, and um, he's got his own bathroom. Oh, hey, Merlini, welcome back. And uh, for those wondering, the big sound things here, the big black, these are not speakers. They are sound dampeners. Removes some echo, makes the studio sound a little more studio-like. This is the only part of uh, the house that's actually completely 100% finished. We've got all our lights hung up. Um, everything is wired appropriately, and it's all good, all good in the hood. We've got everything set up here, and uh, we've got our secondary camera set up as well. We've got one last place to look at, though. It's the big studio downstairs, and of course, the kitchen. All right, so last up, we've got the kitchen, one of the other big living spaces of the house. And it's actually a pretty large kitchen. This is where K-Poptosis works most of his magic. He's been kind of like the house mom a little bit, making sure we get our vegetables, get some leafy greens. He's been sneaking spinach into smoothies and making sure we all stay healthy. Uh, we've got a pretty nice fridge, although it's, it's sort of become a rite of passage that uh, sometimes it doesn't stop when you want ice or water. And, um, well, it's... It's, it's been a, a barrel of fun. We had a guest here last night who got soaked. Over here, we've got uh, our storage area, and of course, the man in charge, LD himself, working on one of the new cameras here. David, how you feeling? Pretty good. Yeah, what are you working on? A camera. Yeah, can you tell us about this particular camera? Is it a nice one? It looks big. 
No, it's a piece of shit. Oh. We, we paid for the looks, not for the, the quality of the camera. That's what we're all about here at Beyond the Summit. That's looks. Your, your eSports dollars at work. Yeah, that, that dirty BTS money, huh? <laughs> so we've got this... <laughs> so we've got this nice view outside. Too bad nobody ever uses it because we're all inside talking about Dota. Who needs to go outside? And um, that pretty much wraps up the house, except the one last big mysterious room of the house. We've got the studio itself, the main casting studio, where it will all be revealed. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to In the Studio, the new Dota 2 series from Beyond the Summit, powered by 100TB.com. 100TB is a premium provider of web server hosting specializing in on-demand, scalable bandwidth servers around the world. In the Studio is a weekly news show where members of Beyond the Summit will interview prominent members of the Dota 2 community, as well as discuss current events. We've got a great first episode lined up for you guys. We're going to have Demon coming in the studio later on. We'll have Cinder joining us as a remote guest, and also we'll be talking to Fear about all things free-to-play and Monster Invitational. I am Zyori, your show host, and joining me to get things started are Gods, K-Poptosis, and Merlini. Boys, how we feeling? I'm feeling great. The studio is looking pretty good. We've come a long way since uh, we first moved out to LA, and uh, really, really glad to be out here. So, uh, yeah, thank you for joining me. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Andrew uh, Zayuri is a new addition to our team. He joined us just a month or two ago. I don't really know. I've been off holidaying in Australia. So. <laughs> yeah, you were on vacay while we were here yeah. building most of the studio. You kind of mm -hmm. slid on in after everything was, oh, hey, nice yeah. studio, boys. Looks good. And I'd but, like to uh, introduce our other members. We've got Ben Malini Wu. How are you doing, Ben? Hello. How's it going? People recognize you, though. You've been around for a Whatever. while. Whatever. Seven, Whatever. eight years. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. And uh, our other new member of the team, Brian, K-Pop Tosis. Yes. Yeah, it's good to be here. It's nice. I'm glad we finally got to unveil everything. Like, it's been such yeah. a long... I've been here for, what, like a month and a half now? And it's just been a lot of, like, work without a whole lot of real, like, payoff quite yet. Yep. So it's nice. It's nice to be here and finally getting everything. Luckily, we've yeah. had Brian to take point on a lot of the construction hardware. Oh, yeah. I don't touch power tools. That's not part of my... When I signed that contract... It said nothing about power tools, so luckily Brian was here to bail us out. My yeah. my contract, not that I have one, is just reading Twitch chat. Like that's that's, <laughs> that's this here Twitch chat. I don't I don't know what we're talking about on the show. That's that's your job. So. Yeah, yeah um, I was just reading Twitch. So to get things started today, guys, we're gonna t learn a little bit more about K-Poptosis. He is our official stats man, amongst other things, and uh, we've actually got a little intro video to learn more about this southern beauty over here. As a child, I was kind of like repressed with my gaming in a lot of ways, like my parents didn't like me playing video games a lot. And then one day I'm just, you know, sitting at my computer and um, I get a contact request from Ice Rob. And I'm like, oh, well, this is interesting. My name is Brian Heron. Um, I am also known online as K-Poptosis. Um, I was born in a small town in Alabama, went to the University of Alabama. I graduated from there with a biology degree, and not long after I graduated, I moved out here to sunny California, and I am now the stats man, amongst other things, for uh, Beyond the Summit. And so when I got to college, I kind of went crazy. Uh, I got a gaming PC like my sophomore year off of a scholarship refund and uh, from then it kind of went crazy I got into it, like it was towards the end of World of Warcraft but I still got into it pretty heavily and then from there I got into um, the MOBA that shall not be named um, and made a really quick transition as soon as I could over to the Dota 2 beta which I really enjoyed um, and I really kind of like nerded out over it like I played a ton of games in a very short period of time um, and um, I have a big background in like traditional sports like I really enjoy baseball and baseball is a huge numbers game um, and there's a lot of statistical analysis and metrics there and so I wondered if I could you know kind of meld the two in a lot of ways of course I was like 
um, influenced by Bruno at TI2 with all the statistical stuff. Um, and so I did several like uh, write ups and stuff. I posted on the Dota 2 subreddit and amongst other things. Um, and they received relatively well. Um, some members of Team Liquid staff uh, thought it was decent and brought me on. And I wrote several articles from them. And from there, I got involved with some casters, namely uh, like Vikramand and Shiver, doing some Starlighter coverage. Um, and from there, I even got uh, I talked to uh, David Gorman here, LD, at Beyond the Summit, and worked with them on some tournaments uh, like Alienware Cup and G League in early 2013. 2013, 2013. <laughs> Um, well, I had done a lot of work with both Shiver and um, Beyond the Summit, um, and they both uh, seemed to enjoy the work that I did. Um, so, once the broadcaster, t broadcaster tools came out, which is the stuff that we used, you know, show the stats on screen, um, a lot of those people were very curious as to whether or not we would do something like that at the International Three. So, uh, David and Shiver, and I think even Bruno. Um, who I talked with a lot about it, um, contacted Ice Frog and was like, hey, what are we going to do about this? Do we want to bring somebody in? What do, what's the plan? Um, and so in like June, it was kind of late in the game. It was like early June, late May, I actually got a contact request from Ice Frog himself, um, basically uh, asking me what I would do, what my visions were, if I had control of everything, and uh, whether or not I wanted to go to Seattle. A lot of people think the K-poptosis comes from Artosis from StarCraft. And I did watch a lot of StarCraft, um, but the name actually has to deal with apoptosis, which is a biological process where cells basically commit suicide to save the rest of the cells, say if they're infected with carcinogens or other type of bacteria that's going to spread if they don't die. Um, and I did a lot of research with that and how it relates to Alzheimer's disease. And so that was my just apoptosis for a while in Steam. And basically me and a couple of friends were queuing late at night we might have been drinking a bit, and a guy made a joke. He's like, oh, you should make your name K-Poptosis. It's a you know, pun. And I was like, actually, you know, that's pretty funny. So I kept that as my name for a while, and I, I thought it was funny. Uh, it's not probably not the best name, but it's unique. It's mine, so you might as well own it. Uh, it's kind of subjective. It's kind of what people see and want in statistics um, but personally what I think what makes good statistics in Dota are statistics that are telling about the game in a true sense like not really obviously it doesn't need to be misleading but it also needs to be entertaining um, it, it might be interesting like certain things might be very interesting in regards to just to statistical aspect but what we're doing as broadcasters is for first and foremost entertaining the viewers so we don't want to do anything that's too you know banal or boring or repetitive we want to make something that's always exciting and we want to in like increase the value of the current broadcast and the casters like I always when I was working with my casters at TI I was always or my stats my stats underlings I was always like we are not a third caster was basically what I was I was big on like we're not the third person there in the booth we're there to make them look good um, when they're talking about something that's when we drop our stats about that something like we are there as kind of a secondary way to give the audience a more well-rounded view of the game and how it's happening because um, like in baseball it's very important to be like oh this guy has you know 400 on base percentage that means he's a very good hitter it, like it it's one thing for a caster to say oh this guy plays a very good queen of pain but be able to brought back it up and to be like oh well this guy has you know 75 percent win rate with queen of pain and they pick it a lot or other teams ban it a lot vice versa add some validity to what the casters are saying so even though you might trust someone like a, an ld who's been around for a while and when he says someone's good at queen of pain you you trust him that he's good at queen of pain it's still good to have that i guess proof in a lot of ways So there you go, guys. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about our Southern Bell here, Brian Heron. Hey, I'm from the South too. Hey, that's <laughs> true, actually. Merlini, where is Atlanta? Is that your home turf? Yes. yes so, it is. but you're not a bell. I don't talk like. Me. You don't have that <laughs> same not a twang. Bell. Bell's for you know? females. But still, I mean, 
Oh, he's still kind of cool. Come I on, I had a southern charm. He's like, oh, I'm glad we have a finally have a southerner in our house. I was like, <laughs> yeah, what? Exactly. <laughs> I've been here for like three months. <laughs> you got to practice that twang. What What are the words, Brian? Is it ruin? Ruin. Ruin. Oh, I'll ruin it. Yeah. And wow. Yes. Yeah. Bull. Yeah. Dude, when we were casting Team Dog versus EG, that nine-minute game that was awesome the other day, mm -hmm. uh, I had you saying Team Dog by the end of it. Dog. I don't think you were paying, you didn't think you realized, but at first it was Team yeah. Dog. And, and everyone says y'all in cast now, too. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, even LD's picked that one up now, saying y'all. LD did it for a run. while, yeah. honestly. Yeah. And I don't think I, don't think I, I got everybody else. We're waiting to eat. Well, the real thing will be when God says it. Mixes yeah. y'all with that Australian accent. I've, I lived Parker. in Texas for 10 years, so oh, yeah? it's coming well, soon, I tell you. What, what Australian, like, neck, like little sayings do we need to pick uh, up on? What? The only one you Heaps. know is Straya. Straya? That's like Straya. Australia abbreviated. Yeah. Australians, like, they're kind of like Americans. They just cheat and abbreviate everything to get shorter and shorter. Okay. Well, now. Oz is shorter than Straya. It's only uh, one syllable. Straya's got more, like... About it, like okay. Australians, all about being right. a bit more harsh and abrasive. Right. But right. isn't yeah. heaps the big Australian thing? Like, oh, that was heaps of fun. No, you say bulk. That bulk. Bulk. Got bulk. Got okay. bulk. We got bulk stats. Like That's your... your job, man. Brian's job is to bring us bulk stats. Is it so, good? Like yeah, you're bulked up? Yeah, bulk is like lot. It just means lots. Lots. Okay. Bulk. Well, yeah, I knew that, but I didn't know so it's like, like such a southern equivalent of hella or Australian yeah. equivalent. Yeah. Hella. Yeah. We got hella. <laughs> Yeah, hella we got hella stats, stats coming. Up. <laughs> wow. But yeah, as far as Brian goes, I don't like stat stuff aside. I thought he, yeah. we just hired him to cook us meals, do our makeup. Basically, he's kind of the mum of the house. Yeah, I cook. I was vacuuming in here earlier. I did the makeup for a lot of you guys today. You clean up. Yeah. Poop. Shouts out to Revlon. <laughs> of kittens. I do clean up poop of kittens. <laughs> I'm kind of the mom, but whatever. I came into the kitchen right after we bought our blender, and I caught him sneaking spinach into a smoothie he was making for LD. Yeah. Literally, he said, LD, do you want some spinach? And he said, ah, I don't think I want He's vegetables like, oh, in no, my fruit. No, you want some spinach. You want some spinach. Because I just like, strong. I'm putting some spinach in this smoothie. I'm like, you do that, man. Yeah. So aside from house mom duties, Brian, talk to us about stats a little bit. And like, what value does it add to a cast? Why do we have a stats man? As I said in the video, like, I think it adds a lot of validity to think. Because it's one thing to like say it and trust the guy when he says it. Like I said before, like when LD Why should just, we trust you? Why should we trust me? Because Ooh. I like. You shouldn't trust me. <laughs> you, shouldn't trust me. Oh, you should trust the stats. This is why we have Ben trust here. The numbers. He, uh -oh. No one for his uh, no, claiming of plays and games. And I'm trying uh, to be really transparent with out. the numbers. I intentionally try to stay away from things that are misleading. Like um, I make it a really important thing to try to if it's relevant to the game or if it's something like I don't try to like. There's a lot of like flame back and forth about some things like item win rates. I've never really done those. So I think they're misleading. There's other things like that. And, um, I like you for that. Yeah, exactly. So I try to be. Ben still doesn't. Is still a stats hater. So I'm it's, gonna try to convert him. But eh. what don't you like about stats, Ben? What's your beat? A lot of times it's just skewed because the good teams always use specific things and they have really high win rates as a result. Like right. six point seven eight Bat Rider, everyone was awesome with it. But now it's like, well, only the really good teams will use Bat right. Rider or Magnus. Even. And you, that, talk, you talked about that. Right. There's that's something we try to do. Is like I try to like um, look at teams. Like especially when I was giving when I give like hero win rates, I would never show a win rate that was lower than the team's overall like win percentage like if not navi like generally have like a 68 69 percent win rate and when i would say things like oh dindy's puck is like an 80 percent win rate that's still consistently higher than the team's win rate not as much it's not that big of a deal or 80 versus like if the team won half their games right but it's still consist like it's still significantly different to i just like compared to the nfl different. where you have you know yeah. streams are, teams are relatively equal it's the weakest just, team get the best draft and then right. Everyone's on a really, relatively well, even playing well, field. With the stats that I use from Dat Dota, it's exclusively professional level. Mm -hmm. And so I'll, the problem is sometimes we get some amateur stats going in. Like sometimes we get but like what's, some what of do you, How do you differentiate amateur from professional? It's relatively subjective. Like if it has a ticket, it's considered. And then certain, like if it's considered an amateur tournament by Valve, mm -hmm. it's not included. And so you have some issues with like, um, not to flame them, but some Korean tournaments probably don't have the best bearing on like a big, you know, tier one team. Like if, you know, Ember Spirit stacking Battle Furies does really well in Korea, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be good at the international. Um, but I try to weed those out. Like you can see them and you can see those individual cases and take them out. My favorite thing with the Korean team is when like, I think it was with ESGN, one of the, the new project had like a top 10 rankings for all the for all these different games. For Dota 2, FXO, this was before Blitz joined the yeah. team and stuff, they were seated like number six in yeah. the world, according to this ESGN what? Dota 2 ranking, yeah. just based on results, because they had this partnership with all the big organizers over the world, and like one of those with, was uh, GOM TV, and because mm -hmm. it was Nexon sponsored league, was 
broadcast by GOM TV. Right, Suddenly, right. FXO at top 10 in the world in Dota yeah. 2. Wow. <laughs> That's where you have to be very, like, like Brian said, right. be careful with your stats. Some of the, like, the ELO based rankings, like Gosu Gamers has their little yeah. ranking and it's exclusively ELO based. They do every, but each tournament is assigned a different point value. So right. you'll gain more and less points. Uh, I used to be with Ghost Gamers. So if you right. have an event like the International, they give it like a f maximum point rating as far as how much it affects your rankings. If it's a very small online cut for a small prize pool, even if it's being registered with the top teams, or maybe only change it like 10% of what that would normally change. So right. they, was, do, they do adjust it to the tournament. Yes, and it was weird for a while because I think at one point like MVP Hot 6 was doing really well and was like undefeated and they were like creeping yeah. into the top 20 at some okay. point. But I think it's kind of adjusted itself down. Yeah. All right, so my last question about stats. All right. you're, you're here doing stats. I don't really know what we're doing for stats. What, what, <laughs> what, what's the plan for Beyond the Summit with stats? So like, I've been a bit quiet for a while because I've been trying, we've been working on a lot of stuff behind the scenes. And so what we're really trying to innovate now is going for more live statistics. Okay. Um, so in the past, it was mostly focusing on historical stuff. Like, oh, in the past, Indy's been really good at Puck. Like, in the past, like this GPM at this point in time has been good. But what we're really trying to focus on now is looking more of things that are going on in the game. So one big thing that we're really excited about coming up is a thing called the Team Fight Recap, where we're going to be able to immediately assess the way that a team fight went, see how many kills, how much gold was exchanged, the experience change, if there are big cooldowns used, and we'll be able to show those real fast uh, to the audience. We're going to be doing things about normalizing the values of jungle and like lane creeps. So the term CS is kind of bad because if you are enchantress at 15 minutes and you've been just doing nothing but farming jungle creeps, you have like 60 CS. Yep. But it's not the same if you're a lane anti-mage farming nothing but you know siege creeps and lane creeps. So we're going to try to do something to normalize that. And we also have just a lot of other exciting things to look at. Like, have you ever like you watched a bounty hunter play in a game and you're like, oh well this. Bounty Hunter's been getting a lot of track kills. I bet he's been benefiting his team a lot. And there's no way of being like, oh, how, how much did he benefit his team? So we have some ways now that we'll actually be able to see how much track goal the team has gotten in. Same thing with Midas's and a lot of similar stuff. So this should be really exciting. It certainly should be, Brian, and we're all looking forward to it. Um, more things to come in the realm of stats. So I think it's time to move forward, though, boys, and yeah. get into uh, the beginning of our next segment. Like I mentioned in the beginning, we have a lot of really exciting guests today, and the first of three will be Cinder, and he's going to be joining us coming up next year to talk about Dota Cinema a little bit, some Captain's Draft, and, uh, well, he's going to talk to us about current events. We have some news topics that we're interested in getting his take on. So stick with us, guys. We'll have a quick break, and then coming back, Cinderin will be with us. <laughs> 